How's it, chaps? And welcome back to the Burton Bills Garage. In today's episode, we are going to have a look at how you guys can easily and really, for not a lot of money, make professional looking and performing acoustic panels. Now, these panels are going to improve the sound in whatever space you're working in, and there are going to be before and after samples in the video. So, stick around and let's get started. So, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you have been watching uh, a lot of videos lately, or maybe you've been attending a lot of these online meetings, or maybe even just sitting in your room and, and wondering, yes, man, this room doesn't sound very nice. Um, yeah, a lot of us are in that same boat. And uh, basically, maybe you're getting these boomy, harsh sounds. Uh, there could be a lot of reverb or echo off the walls. And that is basically the problem that we all have here. A lot of us uh, don't have these fancy studios to work in. I mean, I'm working in my garage, uh, but maybe you guys are doing your meetings in a spare room in the house. And the problem that we've got in all of these rooms is that they've got very hard walls. Generally, we've also got a hard floor, a hard ceiling, a lot of reflective surfaces. And these reflective surfaces are the problem. Uh, what is happening is the sound is, is bouncing off of those surfaces and coming back into our ears or into the microphone at a slight delay. Uh, and, uh, you know, it just causes problems. So that's what we want to try and resolve. Now, uh, one of the, the, the easiest ways, and maybe you don't even realize you're doing this, uh, but a lot of us uh, do that already, and that is to put a nice big rug on the floor. Uh, that helps a lot with absorbing some of the sound, stopping some of the reflections. It uh, doesn't really work in the garage. I don't really like parking the car on uh, on a rug. <laughs> um, so the next thing that we can do is to make these things. Now, these are acoustic panels. Uh, these are things that you can buy. They're quite expensive if you go and buy them, but you don't have to do that. Uh, we'll just make them at home, and they're going to perform just as well and also look really great, customized, if you will. Just before we go any further in the video, we need to clear up two types of treatment. Now, maybe these aren't technically the correct terms, but there's soundproofing and sound absorption. We are not trying to soundproof our rooms. That's a different kettle of bananas. We are just trying to improve the acoustics in a room by creating more absorbing surfaces around us. What tools am I going to need? Well, starting off with a saw and a drill, unless you are able to drill holes with your finger, then you don't need a drill, a pair of scissors, a preferably sharp, screwdriver, pencil, some distance measuring equipment, staple gun with staples, although you could substitute that for like finger or thumb tacks, and a square, and some sandpaper. What materials are we going to need? Well, we need some wood glue, some strips of wood, and in our case, 70 millimeter wide strips, some screws, and a type of covering material. Now, I went to the material shop, uh, shop, shop <laughs> and chose this stuff. So, uh, you know, kind of had a look at uh, everything that was there. And basically, we want something that is very thin and breathable, something that is acoustically transparent. Uh, that's going to give us the best results. And I ended up with this. A nice, uh, I don't know, inconspicuous looking uh, professional <laughs> material. Easy to hang up and uh, not going to bother us with any bright colors. Although, if you are hanging this stuff uh, maybe in your study and your wife wants something nice on the walls, I'm sure she loves her sundress. So just go grab that, cut that up. I'm sure that'll be just fine. And we also need some nappy liner made of real nappies. Yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> nappy liner, that stuff that goes uh, under, um, under, under furniture. Maybe you've seen that before. It's also a semi-breathable material. Generally, it's pretty cheap as well. And the goal here is basically to make a simple square or rectangular timber frame to hold our absorbent material. Which reminds me, you're also going to need some absorbent material. In my case, uh, I found that uh, what is available here in South Africa, which is where I am, uh, we use, uh, well, I could find a knof. I think that's how you say it. It's a mineral wool. And um, the, the bits that I'm using now today, they are 63 millimeters thick. It comes in various sizes. I think it goes down to about 50, maybe even 25 mils thick and up to anywhere, I think 100 or 125 mils thick. But around the world, around various countries, they called different things. I think in the Americas, there's uh, uh, rock wool is, is the, the prominent uh, name I always hear. Basically the same thing. It's a, it's a mineral wool that is used for sound absorbing. So um, 
some specs on this stuff. Uh, the most important thing that I found is that it's not itchy. Um, it doesn't like irritate your skin, or at least it doesn't irritate my skin. It is fire retardant uh, to quite a high degree. And um, it's cheap. That is the important thing here. For a 1.2 meter by 600 piece. Now that's two of these. This is 600 by 600. Um, so, so for two of these, is 40 bucks. That is that is dirt cheap uh, for something that is going to give you these good results. Um, so what we're going to end up with is making these really big panels, uh, a 1.2 by 600 millimeter panel. Uh, it's going to cost you like six, seven bucks in the, in the American dollar terms. Uh, 100 bucks, you know, if you're in South Africa. I'm also just going to put it out there. So use this, don't use this, take it however you will. Don't waste your money on egg boxes, on sponge, um, on duvets, <laughs> on underfilled for carpet, although we'll kind of touch on this in, a, in another video. Uh, or dare I even say, I think I said it earlier, that acoustic foam, um, the really professional stuff, uh, super expensive stuff. These panels that we are going to make, man, they work really, really well. Simple to build, so let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is to make up a frame, so we start off by marking out some strips of wood. In my case, the acoustic material we're putting inside the frame is 63 millimeters thick, so I cut strips of plywood 70 millimeters wide. As for the length, we need four sides to make up a frame, so for these specific frames, I cut four pieces, two pieces 600 millimeters long, and the other two pieces 610 millimeters long. Your case may vary depending on the size of the frame that you want to make, so measure and cut your wood accordingly. Once the wood was cut, the next step was to mark out and drill holes for the screws, mainly because I wanted the frames to be screwed and glued together. After the frame is together, I hit the edges with a bit of sandpaper to round them over a bit. Next up is to grab your piece of material and cut it to the correct size. Bit of a tip here, rather cut the material slightly bigger than you think you may need. You can always cut the excess off later. So I put my frame down onto the material, folded the edges up to check that there was enough material to work with and then cut the excess from the other side. To attach the material to the frame, I used a staple gun. Simple, easy and cheap. I started off by stapling the center and then stretching the material out and stapling each corner. Then I filled in the gaps with a few random staples here and there. Now don't worry if you don't have a staple gun, you could probably use some finger tacks, nails or maybe even a big stapler that might get you by. Next is to grab hold of the material on the opposite side, stretch it out so that it's nice and flat and semi tight and once again staple the center first, move out to each side, pull both corners tight and staple. This time around you'll notice I'm slightly pulling the material before putting in those random staples along the entire edge. Now that we have two sides attached, we follow the same procedure for the remaining two sides.
and the result is a nice flat piece of material. If you look really carefully, you'll notice you can almost see through the material. So that is how thin and breathable this stuff is. This is important so that the sound is not reflected back, but rather easily passes through the material and is absorbed into the sound absorbing mineral wool that we're going to put behind it. Fastening the corners can be a little bit tricky and I'm sure there are many, many ways to do this. But if you are not 100% sure, just watch what I'm doing here and uh, you'll probably be fine. For me, where I'm going to be putting them up, this method is perfectly fine. Now we can cut all of that excess material off. Enter the star of the show, our acoustic panel. These panels come in various sizes, so yours may differ slightly, but the size I chose was 1,200 millimeters long by 600 millimeters wide, or uh, about 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters or if you prefer to work in inches that's 47.2 by 23.6 inches so you can see i had to cut my panel in half to suit the size of the frame i made this stuff cuts super easily especially if you are using the sharp kitchen scissors now uh, your panels may differ slightly in size and uh, just cut yours accordingly to fit whatever size frame you are making So we just drop the panel into the frame, tucking the edges nicely and luckily this stuff is fairly flexible. So if your frame is a little bit out, don't worry, it'll fit. Then I close up the back with a piece of nappy liner, basically just cut it to size, staple it on around all edges, making sure to pull it nice and tight and there we go, one time panel complete. Now, you are not going to be hanging these things up on the wall with press stick or JB Weld or something like that. So the easiest method I've found is to get these little R screws and just screw them into the wooden frame. And that way, wherever you guys are going to be mounting these panels, it makes it a lot easier to hook up with a picture hook, with a nail, with a screw, uh, with string really if you wanted to. Whatever you guys find is the easiest. So I guess the question you're all wanting to know is how well do these things work? Before we get to that, <laughs> bear this in mind that uh, look a lot of us are probably watching on our smartphones or maybe on our TV so you may not hear a noticeable difference. However, if you have a nice good set of headphones on, uh, maybe you've got a good sound system, you'll probably hear quite a big difference. And I'll tell you what, if you still can't hear it, come down to studio, come sit with me here, we'll try a couple of things, you'll definitely notice a big difference. I say studio, I don't know, what, what do you call this thing, studio, garage, I don't know, whatever that is. One more thing, give the video a thumbs up if you want to see more of this type of content and let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Okay, let's get into those samples. This is an audio test, there are three acoustic panels mounted on the wall in front of me, three acoustic panels mounted on the wall behind me, to my left is a roll-up garage door, and to my right is an empty garage. This is an audio test. There are no acoustic panels mounted on the wall in front of me. There are no acoustic panels mounted on the wall behind me. To my left is still the same roll-up garage door, and to my right is still the same empty garage. And I'm using the Rode NTG5, which is boomed overhead right here, and that is recording into the Zoom F6 field recorder. And we are using the Rode NTG5 microphone, which is boomed overhead here. And that is recording into the Zoom F6 field recorder. So there we have it. I hope you could hear a difference. I definitely could. Now, I also do want to say that your results may vary depending on the shape 
of your room, the size of your room, the number of panels that you put up. Now, I've got quite a lot of panels around me here. Um, also, the, the surfaces that you've got around you. So uh, just keep that in mind, although uh, I think anything that you do put up is probably going to make an improvement. Also, if you are interested in any of the gear that I'm using, I have left links in the description below. Uh, unless you're using a phone or you're holding it upside down, then, they, then they're above or wherever. They, they're in the description uh, section. And uh, go check those out if you are interested. I guess that's it. Please like, subscribe and comment on the video. Let us know what you think. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.